He's unpredictable. He's relentless. He's fearless. He's smart. He's a jerk. Oh, man, what a jerk. How would you describe Kirk Minahan? He's talented. He's blunt. He's complicated. He's the fakest tough guy I know. He's honest. A self-proclaimed weenie. He's angry. He's actually a good guy. He's a psycho big mouth prick. I wish we had more Kirk Minahans. How would you describe Kirk Minahan? Combustible. Unpredictable. Venomous. Chesty. Obnoxious. Selfish. Polarizing. Pompous. Enough about me. Let's get to the show. It's Kirk Minahan's Enough About Me. We first made a list of guys we wanted to have on the show. Mr. Skin was like right at the top for me. I've been listening to him for years with John and Jerry, with Stern on his own site, MrSkin.com. So I was looking forward to this conversation. A chance to sit down with the legendary Mr. Skin. And here it is. All right, I've been lucky so far in the podcast. Obviously, it's done great. It's been number one on iTunes a couple of times for uh, sports and recreation. We've had some of the great writers, Bob Ryan, Dan Shaughnessy. We've had Sean McDonough on, Portnoy on. Who am I forgetting? We've had, we've had a million great guests. Kurt Schilling we just had last week. But i got to say, this is probably my favorite guest so far. We've had him on the DNC show a million times. I love the guy. I've been listening to him on Stern forever. Mr. Skin joins us right now. Let me ask you this, Mr. Skin. This, is, this fascinates me. For me, so well, how old are you? 53. You're 53. Okay, so we're, yeah. I'm, I'm about 10 years younger than you, 12 years younger than you. Okay. For me, it was uh, Jamie Lee Curtis in Trading Places. Oh, yeah. Beverly D'Angelo in Vacation and Michelle yep. Johnson in Blame It on Rio. Those, those that, are that's, iconic, uh, all iconic. Those are, scenes, uh, those are the ones that were sort of the, because I was about, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. Those are the eye openers for me. When, where did it start for you? Where did you say, well, oh, my oh my God? For me, was when I first got a a VCR, well, it was actually a Betamax at the time, and cable television. And the reason is because, uh, you know, I had grown up in the 70s watching ABC, CBS, and NBC. And, you know, you're coming of age, you're 13, 14 years old. All of a sudden, uh, in the fall of 1980 in suburban Chicago, we got this cable television, a Betamax. And I was able to tape like two or three movies a night. And I remember just in the first week I started taping movies on cable, um, I, I taped a movie called Bobby Joe and the Outlaw that had Linda Carter uh, <laughs> naked, right. you know, Wonder Woman. She was naked uh, three times in the first, like, 35 minutes of the movie. And it, it just was, I, I couldn't believe, like, if Linda Carter was naked, and I taped the movie Texas Lightning that had Marsha from the Brady Bunch. Oh, no, Maureen McCormick, yeah. Maureen McCormick. And I remember thinking, my God, if these girls have done nude scenes, who else is out there? And for me, that was a big deal, especially, and I can't, express to people who now with iPhones and internet and cable television, the power of turning on for the very first time in your life, in your own home, your television and getting HBO Cinemax. And oh, it's, it was, it was unbelievable. I remember for, I remember for me, I would, I went down, we had, a, we had a VCR in the basement. I went down and taped vacation, like without my parents knowing on the VCR. Yep. Remember you could actually set it. So if it was at two in the morning, you could actually set it for two in the morning yep. and you record it. And I wore out that scene actually wore out. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because if you remember us guys that watch videotapes in the in the eighties and nineties, when you'd have movies taped, a lot of times when you'd be at a buddy's house, when you'd get to the nude scene part, of the be yeah, kind be, of <laughs> correct, correct, right, crappy. exactly, exactly. Because <laughs> we all were watching. By the way, if yeah. you go back and watch the Beverly D'Angelo uh, scene at the nineteen, uh, uh, the shower at, scene. Yeah, the shower scene. Yeah. If you go back and watch that. Uh, in slow motion, you mm-hmm. can see that she's wearing underwear in the – she's wearing panties. Yeah, you're right. That, is that yeah. what it is? Yeah. It was like a thong or something, right? Yeah. 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 That's bizarre. Yeah, it's it's really cool. And uh, it's one of those things It's kind of a bummer because you, you want right. to fantasize that she was completely nude. But if you watch it and slow it down, you could see the panty lines on the bottom. So would you, a little, little trivia for you on that. Would you agree with me – I think I've heard you say this before. Would you agree that like from – I'll say Phoebe Cates till about 85 or 86 was sort of the golden era of, of what we're talking about. No, I'll tell you what I think. From 1980 yep. to 1985 uh, was the golden age of teen sex comedies. That's the, what I'm saying. The greatest uh, R-rated. You know, John Hughes came along, and I know people love all his movies, Pretty in Pink, Breakfast Club, all that kind of stuff. No nudity, he, though. Overall, he took the nudity and right. the sex out of the teen sex comedy and he his movies were so successful they veered away but boy you remember like porkies and my tutor and last american virgin and you mentioned fast times richmond high phoebe cates what i consider the greatest nude scene in the history of film um to me whoa, 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 wait, 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 that's yeah. the, you think that's the greatest nude scene in the history of film is phoebe to cates me it is. and and 
to me it is, and believe me, I've seen uh, <laughs> I know. a lot of nudity. When you combine everything, how popular you got to understand. Phoebe Cates in 1982 mm-hmm. was the equivalent of take Selena Gomez, Miley Cyrus. Well, I don't want to use Miley Cyrus, but take Selena Gomez and you know all the biggest you know the ones where the guys now are 18, 19, 20 years old in love. That's who Phoebe Cates was at the time, and then she does this great movie, walks in slow motion to the cars moving in stereo music and takes her bikini top off. Uh, you got to remember, uh, you know, from the era and all things considered, uh, to me it's the greatest nude scene of all time. I would say my vote personally would be Denise Richards in uh, in um, Wild Things. In Wild yeah. Things, I got yeah. oh, no, I, I got to say I, well, that's my number one. We consider that at our website. We consider that the greatest menage a trois scene. Oh, there's no <laughs> in doubt. Movie history. So although, it's although, the top Nef, ten although, or no question although about Nef it. Campbell is not really naked in it, right? Right, that's one of the negatives. Now, Nev Campbell went on to do some good nudity later on, but in that scene, a lot of people forget that Nev Campbell was kind of skinny. It was Denise Richards who did all the nudity, but boy, did, that was her at the top oh, of her game. She know? brought she, it. She's never looked better. But you're right, that's a, that's an excellent point. You know, John Hughes and I love The Breakfast Club, guys. People my age love that, but you know, Molly Ringwald, Ali Sheedy, all these girls, never naked in these movies. No, the main characters never were, and it, 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 and it's something that I talk to, you know, fans of celebrity nudity, and and yes, I like those movies too. I could sit and watch Breakfast Club and quote your lines and stuff, but it was sad because it it kind of that was right around eighty five, eighty six, and and that turned the corner from that golden era where we got funny good movies, but also incredible nudity, which you saw in those movies I, I checked off from nineteen eighty to nineteen eighty five. The other thing you never get now is like. A real A-list Hollywood star, like say Sharon Stone was twenty years ago, who's doing like shower scenes and the specialist and isn't mm-hmm. Basic Instinct. Basic the real, instinct. the real A-listers right now, they're not doing that either. Well, the only thing I'd say, I'd say that's true in movies. What is different now is all the television right. shows we have, where I think you're seeing big name, you know, actresses, or, or or you become a big name actress because you're on these very popular shows doing plenty of nudity. So. From that standpoint, you know, I joke that 80 to 85 was the golden age of teen sex comedies. I truly believe that we are in the golden age of celebrity nudity now, not because of movies, but because of all the great television programming, Game of Thrones, Masters of Sex, uh, right. uh, Shameless. And these are girls that are now very famous actresses that are doing nudity on a regular basis. I mean, look at Emmy Rossum and Shameless. I think Shameless is a, is a spectacular uh, show for nudity, and Emmy Rossum's the star of the show. She just does just as much nudity as anyone else. You know, it's it's fantastic. Let me ask you this, because I know you get asked it all the time. I asked you it last time you were on the show. It, it's still it, it's still mystifying to me. You say you did as well this past year as you've ever done before. The year before, you know, just as well also. Uh-huh. So I, so you said Masters of Sex. So I just did. I have my phone right here. I just did Lizzie Kaplan nude, and boom, 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 boom. How do you combat that? Well, I think, first of all, it's because I'm Mr. Skin. I, I have a, a true expertise on this subject, and I, and I think when you come to MrSkin.com, not only do we have all of Lizzie Kaplan's nude scenes in a very easy and mm-hmm. uh, organized way, but our website will really blow your mind from the standpoint of um, how we present this content, the love and the, and the uh, it just the, the level of detail we go into, and we get so many people that come to this website, 9 million people a month that come to the site. A certain percentage of those are always going to be willing to pay for the level of expertise or, or for, for what I do. Uh, and, and if you're a fan of celebrity nudity, uh, you're going to be, want to be a, a member of MrSkin.com. I totally get it for a casual guy. You, may, you like to watch a nude scene every once in a while, and you just want to pull up one Lizzie Kaplan scene on your phone, Maybe MrSkin.com is not for you, but if you're a true fan of this and and, a, and into movies and into this, boy, our website does would, will blow your mind, and and people are willing to pay for that. On top of all of that, we've been smart about uh, leveraging our our brand and our and our uh, tech tech development team, and we've acquired more and more properties. We're uh, uh, you might have heard of Naked News out of Toronto. Mm-hmm. We, we own and operate that website. Uh, uh, Fleshbots, a blog we took over. We just uh, took over uh, Egotastic, which is a men's safe for work blog. We bought What Would Tyler Durden Do? We've expanded our 
kind of number of properties, with MrSkin.com always being in the middle. So, the, so me from 10 years ago and, and today, uh, 2015 was our, our best year ever, and we're so excited about 2016 because of uh, what we're going to do uh, revenue-wise. It, it truly, like, blow away 2015 that it seems weird that we could be doing this for 17 years and having our best years, but it, it, that's kind of why. We're, we're more than just MrSkin.com now. Is it weird, not weird, but is it harder for you now to be as passionate about it when you're 53 as you were versus like 1986, 1980? Are you better? If I, you I mean because I, I go to bed earlier now well, than no, I used but, to? But not only that, but just because, I mean, I think it meant more to you when you were 14 or 15 like it did to me than you do when you're 41 like I am or 53. Yeah. Like you well, are you, as, no... if, I, if I say to you, you know, if I gave you a big young actress today, would you be as well versed as you were about Say uh, Michelle Johnson, yeah. or you, yeah, you still are. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's what I do, and I now the difference is when I started this website 17 years ago, I was I was the whole team. In other words, I did all the reviews, bios. I would go get the pics and clips. I chose what actresses would go on the website. I was I was the whole content department. Now I have 10 people whose full full time job just in the content department is to go through every movie and television show and look for the stuff. I don't physically do that anymore, but mm -hmm. when they find a great nude scene um, or something interesting or, or the Sunday Night Roundup, I'm, I'm reviewing it uh, when they're done doing the work. So I don't have to do the grunt work, but I still get to see all the nudity. So that, that's how I keep um, abreast of everything that's going on. But as far as being as interested in it, I'll tell you what. You remember if you watched True Detective in the first season when mm -hmm. Alexander Daddario? Oh, that, that was a was... episode two, a life changing yeah, experience. Like, yeah, like you even know it was episode two. Of course. Well, I want to tell you that when I saw that nude scene, I knew it, number one, I knew instantly that was going to be the best nude scene of 2014. But Absolutely. I was also like thrilled, just like I was when I saw Phoebe Cates naked for the first time. That's a great. That's a great of, point. From the standpoint of man, you don't see a girl with big natural breast that's that beautiful that's in a mainstream well you know hbo television show do a nude scene like that that is rare enjoy that especially like normally a girl with breasts like that they would be fake but those were real and she got completely naked and, and you must have beautiful. seen the you must have yeah. seen the next day or that night spike on her on your site right you can see that no, right away let's say 2014 spike because right I, you know when i did my top 10 nude scenes of the year my anatomy awards everything she was all over it and people could knock in enough of that nude scene it was just spectacular yeah hbo has gone all in on that you know the days of the dream on episodes are in first and tens are, are, are gone now they do good shows with like legit crazy nudity in the middle of the episode yeah you bring up a good point because in the early days um and i like dream on would be one that i kind of I, I really thought was a good show but you're right like uh, first and ten and some of these other shows they weren't like, you know, it didn't capture the attention of, of the country, but boy, Game of Thrones and True Detective and uh, some of the great television that we have now, even if you think about, you know, Netflix with Orange is the New Black and Amazon with Transparent, there is such good programming. First and foremost, it's almost impossible to keep up with everything. Uh, secondly, it is, you know, you walk out of an hour, you watch an hour of Game of Thrones, it's almost like you went to a movie. It's that well done. Oh, no question. Yeah. Same with Netflix, too. I mean, you, I, I'll, can I, I'm, I'm, I, didn't, I specifically didn't want to get too into, you know, was this person naked this, during the podcast with you? Because I know you do it all the time. Robin uh, Robin Wright. Oh, yeah. Well, people forget uh, Forrest Gump. She was uh, naked and she showed her butt. A lot of yeah, but you, but you, you didn't see any boobage, though. Oh, no. Well, oh, but she, she has been naked. But, but what you, oh, you're saying what she's playing the guitar in Forrest Gump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. Um, yeah, she's... Uh, She's probably, um, th these are probably things you would never know. Like, she did a thing called Mull Flanders, which was like a... Oh, like Morgan a Freeman, that's right. Yeah, oh, good. Okay, so you yeah. do know your movies. Like, yeah. I was going to say, I doubt you've even heard of this kind yeah. of thing. It was the mid-90s. Right. But, uh, yeah, she showed her breasts in that. She also did a uh, movie called State of Grace in which you could see her topless uh, from about... God, it's almost 20 years ago. It was probably 1990 or so. So uh, she has done nudity, and by the way... Um, you know, the House of Cards, I think she, she looks better than ever. She looks yeah. awesome. She looks yeah. tremendous. Yeah. She looks great. I mean, Kate Mara, too, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. they all, I mean, yeah. I think that, I think that show is, see, that's like, like, that's not even on cable or network. Right, television. it's a whole new world. I know. It's like, that's, and the cool thing about that, 
there's two things. One is when they release these uh, Orange is the New Black or House of Cards or whatever, they release all the episodes at once. So right. Those are always busy days at the Mr. Skin offices because <laughs> my guys have to, in one day, go through the whole season and, and find all the nudity so we could report on it. So those are always uh, exciting days at our office. When did Mr. Skin start? 97, 98? 99. 99. Uh, August, 10th, August 10th of 1999 at 4.45 p.m. Central Time in in Chicago, where I live. And you were a stock trader before that? No, I was uh, just a clerk at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. All I did was, uh, I was 30, what was I, about 36 or so, and I um, was, my job was to watch desks, you know, do the hand signals, go right. in the futures pits. I would watch the desks, they'd be on the phones with people all over the world, and I'd flash hand signals, but this en- orders into me, and I'd put them into my broker in the pit. But this encyclopedia knowledge of all this stuff must have been, you know, if, if I had a buddy who knew all this stuff, I mean, it's something you would you'd do with this guy all the time. So obviously it was something that people knew about. Yeah, because what happened is, uh, first and foremost, because I taped all these movies and made best of five-hour videotapes, and I wrote down all the times of the nude scenes, and I, I'd fold the paper up and stick it into the into the box of the, the video. I had these boxes and boxes of stuff, plus I did all this uh, work on categorizing everything, and over time, my friends loved me because we'd be at a, a bar or a wedding or a birthday party or whatever, and, you know, without fail, at some point, guys would be crowding around me asking me questions about actresses, and I'd kind of rattle it off off the top of my head. Well, when I went to the Merck, which was one enormous locker room of all males, um, what people don't know about the Merck is, yeah, it, a lot of the time it's super busy and crazy, and you've never been in an environment like that, or used to be because it's closed down now, but right. in the 90s, when it was slow, what people don't know is there'd be just a bunch of dudes standing around and I'd be standing there in my spot in the pit and all of a sudden a runner would come up with a card and someone would ask, you know, they'd ask me like, has, uh, you know, if Friends was popular in the 90s, you know, they'd say like, has Courtney Cox ever been naked? And I'd write down on the card, oh yeah, you could see her nude in Blue Desert. She did it before she hit it big on Friends. And I'd tell them the time and all this stuff and she'd run in the pit and I would do that during all the slow parts, so it really honed my craft without knowing it. I wasn't doing it at the time to right. have a website or anything. It was just the mid-90s, and I was just this guy that knew all this nude stuff. So the Merc was very good for me to hone my craft uh, where I would eventually go on radio shows and people would ask me and you know those questions, and that's how I became so good at it because not only did I know it, but I had a lot of practice with guys quizzing me for years and years at the Merc, uh, and it was a... Yeah, it was one of those things that I was preparing for something, but I didn't even know I was preparing for it. And when did you, so you first showed, you were on like a local Chicago radio show? Yeah, I was in a bar in Chicago, like a neighborhood bar in Chicago, and my buddies were quizzing me, and it was like a Tuesday night, and I had to be on the floor at like 7 in the morning, you know, be up at 6, get on the floor at 7 for the open at 7.20, and, uh, you know, I was like, geez, guys, I got to get to bed, and they're quizzing me. I'm like, one more beer, and I'm out of here, and uh this guy taps me on the shoulder. He's like, you know this stuff off the top of your head? I'm like, yeah, what's it to you? And he goes, well, I have a radio show here in Chicago. Would you want to come on my show and do this? And I thought, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll give it a try. And uh, I didn't want to use my real name, so we came up with Mr. Skin a couple weeks later when I went on the show. And uh, when, I, when I did the show, I thought it was like, you know, I was a fan of Chicago radio. I'm a fan of radio in general. And I had never even called into a radio show, so I was nervous, but I was like, oh, this will be my 15 minutes of fame. I'll go back to work, and that what a, what a neat thing that I got to go on a radio show. And, uh, you know, I, I went on there, and all these people called in, and I was nailing every question, having fun with it. I even uh, made a joke. I, you know, I was also, like, made it fun because, you know, I wasn't a robot. I remember uh, someone asked me about Julie Andrews, you know, from – you know, she had been in Mary Poppins and Sound of Music, and they asked me about her, and I said, uh, you know, I said, yeah, she was nude in an hour and 45 minutes into a movie called S.O.B., and uh, her hills were alive. You know, was, you know like, so <laughs> right, I, right, right. I tried to make it fun, and I was thinking, this is it, I'll do this one time, go back to the Merc, and that was cool, I got to go on the radio, but as I was leaving, uh, the producer tapped me on the shoulder, and he said, we had so many people that want to ask you questions, uh, would you come back, and... Uh, uh, then I kind of figured at that point, maybe I have something here, and I started to do radio and eventually uh, started the website in 1999. Well, you know, you're, whenever you're on with us, you're on with us maybe once a year or something we have you on. Yeah. And, and the reaction with John and Jeremy is unbelievable. And I know I grew up, I uh, would hear you with them, but particularly with Stern as well. That must have been an insane boost for you career-wise. 
Yeah, it still is. Like, oh, and I sure, remember right. when I went in to Dennis and Callahan, like I got to go in studio once when mm-hmm. I was out in Boston for a, I was doing some radio thing out there, and I, I went in, and it was really cool uh, to meet those guys. I always like to at least get one or two visits in studio in my career because some of these shows I've been going on for 15 years, but I only do it over the phone, so I don't get to meet them. So that was a big thrill, and uh, I'm also really into sports. I'm a big baseball fan, and uh, it was just kind of cool to – to go into those studios um but yeah stern is that it's a, just a whole other level because when i went on his show for the first time in march of 2000 um the same thing i i got asked to be on the show but i was thinking i was nervous but i was nervous because i didn't know how howard would react to it and i was just hoping to do a good job and make sure that you know he didn't totally laugh me off the you know the interview but as it turned out how I was promoting my first annual Anatomy Awards in 2000, and uh, Howard loved it. He um, he thought it was so cool. This guy knew this stuff off the top of my head, and that there was a place on the internet you could go to look up any nude scene in the history of film. So, uh, as it turned out, um, you know they started to have me on on a regular basis. Now I've been in studio there, you know, I don't know, 25 times in my in my career, and I, I can't tell you how important that's been to the success of my business and even just how many people yourself included are fans of that show and and especially in LA with all the uh, you know the actors and PR people you know Judd Apatow was a fan of Howard Stern he heard me once on the show and when he was writing the script for Knocked Up and trying to come up with a a job career for those guys yeah he, the reason he came up with that, because he heard me on Stern, he was trying to come up with something that was uh, an embarrassing, uh, uh, you know, funny job that someone could have uh, during this uh, movie. So the, the, all the things that have happened to me in my career, a lot of it, you know, I want to thank, you know, that show for, for making those things happen. Who is the great uh, actress? Who is the one who gets asked about the most who has not been naked yet? Who is the, who is the, who is the great uh one that we're waiting for? Well, I think um, if I had to uh, guess, I mean, it, it changes uh, all the time. Um, uh, I would say Mila Kunis is one. I know people out there are saying, um, oh, I've seen her nude and things, but everything she's done has been a body double. So she'd definitely be one. I know for the history, uh, for my history, yeah, yeah. I was always bummed Raquel Welch never did a nude scene. That was a kind of a bummer for me. Uh, she's like, I mean, she was in so many movies and bikinis and stuff, had this incredible body, but here she is. She's probably like 75 years old now or something. And I don't think it's going to happen now, but she never did a nude scene, which was always a bummer to me. I know also like from more modern television, I was kind of hoping Christina Hendricks from Mad Men, Joni, the, the secretary would do a nude scene. There were some weird, uh, there were some weird pictures that were floating out, I think with her, right? Yeah. Some cell phone pictures. But, yeah. Yeah. But we never saw her face with those, but, um, yeah, so those those are a couple that uh, you know I know I get asked, but if you name uh, uh, you know I know I'd say Jennifer Lawrence too, but you know those cell phone pictures came out, so I don't think it's as uh, we get a lot of time with her though. She'll I think she'll she'll have a role at some point. Where, yeah, where, oh, where, for sure. Where, where that happens. Yeah. Would sure. you say that the average your average uh, uh, website visitor is like about my age, say late thirties, early forties? No, I think white. I, I think a little younger. It depends. Like if you're coming from your phone, I think you're a younger dude. If you're coming from the internet, you're probably older. But I could tell you that it's you know pretty heavy guys coming to our site um you know probably 80 20 men to women now who's and, the hottest uh, who, who's the, who gets the most traffic right now who's the most searched woman on mr skin uh right now scarlett johansson is number one uh just you know she's an a-list star uh she did that nude scene in under the skin a few years ago and uh she's up there and it's funny like salma hayek's up there she's kind of a more of a milf but uh has done some nice nudity has she been naked Oh my God! Yeah, she did a, a movie called Frida. Oh, Frida, yeah. Yeah, where she had a lesbian scene from 2002. Also, Ask the Dust, where about 33 minutes in with Colin Farrell, she goes skinny dipping and it's full frontal. So you might want to check that out at her website. Um, but yeah, you know the usual suspects: uh, uh, Anne Hathaway, Natalie Portman, Halle Berry. You know they've they're all uh, always up there. I think if you looked at the history at our website, I'd have to say Alyssa Milano. Would probably be the most searched. Really? In seven in seventeen years, you know. I'm Should be that. number one, huh? I'd have to say, just it's crazy with her how many guys are uh, are, are fans of hers, especially in the first, you know, 
10 years of the site, she was always in the top five. Uh, so I'm saying that I think last I was looking the other day, and I think she was 19th currently. And I'm telling you, in the history from almost 17 years, if I had to guess, I'd say Alyssa Milan is the most searched in our history. You know, was the the appeal of of Mr. Skin. Here's the appeal of it right now is 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 in, I think every high school goes through this. Every there's guys my age, guys generation older, generation younger. But for me, I remember my senior year in high school, a kid walking up to me in between second and third period. I remember this and saying, you know, there's a movie on HBO right now. This is 1992, maybe no, maybe 93, where the the oldest daughter from Charles in Charge is naked. Nicole Eggert. Nicole Eggert. And, we, and I said, oh, holy shit, are you serious? And blown away with Nicole Eggert, buzzed yeah. through Winchester High School in Massachusetts like a saw in 1993. And that desire to see people you kind of know and watch on TV naked is, to your point, sort of the core appeal. It's not finding some sort of, you know, random kind of trashy porn star naked. It's to find these girls that we've watched on TV or seen on movies naked. Alexander Daddario is a great example. Phoebe Cates. That's really the core appeal of Mr. Skin, isn't it? Yeah, and that's why I started the website. I was like, I, I know that's going to happen where somebody from Charles in Charge or, you know, she went on to be some, uh, Summer Quinn in, in, uh, on Baywatch, and you'd be watching her for totally innocent reasons. You're watching Baywatch, you're watching Charles in Charge, and you see this girl, and I knew that guys, because that's how I always was, that guys would think, I wonder if she's ever done a nude scene. Right. And really, I started it, the website, because I wanted to make sure – that you can find it. And I, when I started this, and you could still do it today, you could search her by, like if you didn't know her name, but if you search Charles in Charge at our website, it'll tell you all the girls from Charles in Charge has you know, done nudity. Uh, or if you, you know, you could search by blonde hair, whatever it is. We'd make it as, even if you didn't know the name, we want to make it easy for you to find your girl. So you could, because it's very important to a guy to know if, if, <laughs> if a girl's done a nude scene. And the, Bay, and the Baywatch movie's coming out Right now, and that's on Mr. Skin. If I go oh right now, God. I can yeah, see. Alexander uh, Daddario's in it, right? Yeah, Alexander Daddario's going to play Nicole Eggert's role, uh, Summer Quinn. And they had some pics last week of them uh, you know, filming. This thing will be out May of 2017. And uh, uh, Kelly Rohrbach's playing Pam Anderson's role of C.J. Parker. And Kelly Rohrbach, all you got to know is she's a model who dated DiCaprio. So that will give you an idea of her hot, hotness level. But, yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, I don't think there's going to be nudity. Uh, don't count on that. But... Um, We'll see, but uh, the bottom line is the girls in just their uh, bathing suits so far that I've seen the pictures, uh, you're going to see some really hot girls, and I'm sure there'll be some nice slow-motion stuff if it's Baywatch. All right, Mr. Skin, thanks. You are the greatest. Your website, MrSkin.com. I follow you on Twitter. It's at Mr. Skin. Is that on Twitter? Yes, just yeah, at Mr. Skin. follow you there. Yeah. You're great on Twitter. Great follow. Thanks for coming on here. Well, really, no, Kirk, really thanks so much for having it. me. I really, I really appreciate it. All right, we'll see you soon. We'll talk to you later. All right, man. Take care. All right, thanks as always for listening to Enough About Me. Yeah, bleh. Let's just keep running this because this shows, Ben, how much I suck at doing this. You know, I, I'm not articulate. I can't really speak. So I'm going to try and do the best I can to tell you this is not my fault. It's your fault. Even I said that even I, fuck, I said that wrong, too. It's my fault. It's not your fault. You're listening. Hang in. If you're driving, you're running around, give me another 45 seconds. I'm going to tell you what to do to help me out. Maybe I'll get better at this. As every week goes on, we'll, we'll check in. We'll see if there's any progress. Go to iTunes or Stitcher or WEI.com or the WEI mobile app. You can find enough about me. You can go back and listen to the great guests we've had. We've got some great ones coming up. My man Ben's doing a great job getting the guests lined up. They're going to be really good in the next few weeks. And when you go there, when you go to iTunes, do me a favor, please, because I need it. Leave a rating and a review. That helps me out. It'll keep these shows going, going, and going. So hang in with me, okay? I know I suck at this, but I'm getting better, I think.